Before we start now, my name is uh, Aki Fannes. I'm working at uh, Delft University of Technology. I've been running a uh, depth map uh, workshops uh, since 2006-2007. Started with ar archaeologists uh, because uh, before we have always troubles to get allowed to install the software. Uh, now everybody has their own laptop. It's so easy to run the software workshops. I'm going to show you, uh, I have a map here with an arrow on it, from Rotterdam, and I'm going to show uh, some analysis on that one, and, uh, and then I will show you the more the latest stuff, and uh, I will show you also the whole line analysis and so on, for, uh, I do it more on cities, and uh, then uh, later castles will take over with the more advanced stuff. So for me, it's like completely for new beginners. And the depth map now, though, is written like this five plus open. It's really very, very simple. So, so, this is the software for those who don't know. You can just click on that icon and then you see this appearing. And uh, I always write five, five plus open. You can also click on this one. And then you just can. And then a window will appear. And then you go to. Uh, look at here. Go to Mac plus import, and then you choose a DXF file. So when you have to draw the actual map, I take the wrong map. map. And uh, when you draw an actual map, uh, you have to make sure that you use a single line, not multiple line. But now recently, a lot of people use the road center line through GIS. But when you draw the actual map, you have to draw with any kind of software which can export a, a DXF file. So that is the most important. This is an actual map of Rotterdam. With, uh, this is drawn by hand. It took me about a week. Uh, so this is from 2003. And uh, now I'm going to, you have to go to map. Which clicks up that you go to map. And you have to convert the drawing map into an actual map. Because first you have to run the actual analysis. And then you see a map of connectivity, so the red line shows uh, the highest number of connections and the blue the light with one or two connections. Yeah? Yes? Okay. You know what I do? I show you very quickly how it's done. And then uh, while you're processing, I send them around. So everyone in here has free Wi-Fi from the cell yeah. Wi-Fi, yeah. and you have access to the mail list, the SpaceX mail list. Yeah. Okay. If you can send them. So I'll send the, the maps on the mail list now, and I'll send then another uh, email for the files for my for my presentation. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I'm not on the online then. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we have uh, we have a memory stick. You're not on the list. I have a memory stick. I can't remember. Like, you can... If you have a memory stick, so... Uh, I'll get five. You know what I do? I have to do a first demonstration, because you have to watch carefully. And while I'm writing some advanced analysis, you can start to exercise on, on that one. It, it, it's good to look, look now. And then you have to use a manual because I show you 5 plus open, open plus run, tick on that box. I think it's the best efficient way to, to do it. Because how much time do I have like for my <coughs> It has an error on it, and I will show you where to find it because you might have some analytics. So, first, I do now we have prepared the actual map, then I got the tools plus actual convex plus patch and run graph analysis. And then it automatically go on radius n. You click just OK and let it process. 
And uh, depending on how capacity of your computer, mine's a little bit slow. I'm running. I have a win. I'm running my on the Windows version on parallel desktop. And you see, like this is a global integration of uh, Rotterdam, and now the arrow is one on one of the lines. So you see a uh, integration uh, number there. It, it looks okay, but it might be some omens. And how do you do that? You have a folder here, which you call new count, down there. It's very poorly resolution on that one. Uh, you can expand the desktop, but make it this. I make it this. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. no, that's a bit bigger, yeah. A bit Big bigger. Yeah, you cannot use an app to click on the plus, <laughs> like control plus. But when you see on the new count, everything is red. It means that something is not properly linked. And sometimes you cannot see it. So you can either go to Windows and click on table, and you click on connectivity, and then you see, oh, there's one with zero connectivity. So I'm going to click on that line, and then I turn the table off. And it's somewhere market somewhere. I can see it is the new count. I see there is something appearing in yellow. I zoom in. Click on this one. See here is one. It's only. And what do you do then? You just click on the plus sign on the actual map here, and then you click on editable. So now you can edit. And now you can click on that line. And you can make it work like this. But there's, a, but there's another element there because it's really, if you zoom in, you see, it, you see it slowly some blue areas appear. It's really poor. And you zoom in, but that's what you see me here. You see that two lights, they're like an island uh, here, and they are also not other things. And that you cannot identify with the comments given. Sometimes it's just to zoom in and take the hand and walk through the whole map. Or you can go to the scatter plot as well. There's another, there's a third way of doing this. You go to scatter plot, and you see, I don't know if you can see, you see a, for those if you stand there's a blue point there, and there's a red point somewhere up there. I don't see, it. here it is. You can stand very close. <laughs> but you will see it on your computer. And what you can do, you can mark the blue point. Just mark that blue point, click on that one, and you see now they're highlighted. So those are one way of and then this is the third way. So this this is very boring exercises, but uh, and what you do then, either you can here's another line, you can draw an extra line here, click on that line and you extend it like this. And now I can go to tools and go and run the whole thing again. And probably you will see it go much faster. And now you will see uh, it's almost finished there. And double check again, click on the new count, and you see that everything is green. Here we get. So now it means like things are properly. The next question is like all this preparation you have to do is uh, how do you deal with tunnel and bridges because you have lines that are crossing each other like this and uh, I can show you how to deal with bridges and tunnels first you have a bottom here in the corner which you call join here if I just zoom in to the area the red the most integrated is the ring road of Rotterdam I zoom in so that more. I know that this and these rows are not linked. Can we make it bigger? So I want to unlink the orange line from the yellow line. So I go to this one, click on the side and click unlink. Then it gets a little bit darker. And then we click on this and this. Oh, this, this. And you get a circle. It means now the lines. Or unlink. And then you can say, oh, I did something wrong. It was the wrong line. You can click link again. You click
click on one line, oops, it can only take one line at the time, click on the other line, and now they are together again. So it's just like going the link, unlink, this, I unlink again, and then we got it like this. So when you zoom out, you will see all the circles. It's really cool to see it here. The power of the beamer is. <laughs> Yeah. But the, another thing is, when I click on the arrow, you see the map, and you don't see the unlinks anymore. So that you have to do for all the bri bridges. But how do you do the tumble? Because under the, the mass uh, river in Rotterdam, here, is a tunnel going, it's a loose line connecting somewhere here, it should be connected to that line, consuming even more. Helps. I think this moves ends here. See if we can make it even more. Yes, that's better. I want to link that line with that line. This is a tunnel. One way of doing it is to draw a straight line and then you unlink all the lines on the top of it. But if you have a really tunnel, for a lot of kilometers, it's far more easy <coughs> to go. It's very simple, it's just like linking a line. You put on link, you click on the one line, you click on the other line here, and you zoom out, and you zoom in so you can see the tunnel much better. The jerk, and then you don't see the. the ah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, the that's it. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> so you will see it when you when you click on the arrow here, you come out of the unlink. But if you click on one of these button the unlinks, you will see you see here the tunnel. You see all the red circles. Uh, you will see it on the map. So these exercises you have to do, and then you run <laughs> to be sure that everything you run. The global integration analysis again, and I said just do these exercises until you make sure that everything is proper linked, and uh, before you run all the before the phone stops to say something. So if you click on the field count, you see that to be sure things are linked because everything is fine. And here up you have a folder saying or this word integration. H, H is like global integration. You can run a local integration with radius 3, it's 3 times direction change from every street. So the actual analysis is about pure about topological business, it's about direction change. So you go to tools, angle, converge, patch, run graph analysis, and then you put radius 3 here, and then you click OK, and then you see like uh, where your subcenters are appearing. But Dutch cities, it, it's not so highlighted as well because bridges are expensive. So you have a long main route and then sometimes they have little twists like this. And so if we, now we're going to add the angular value of the lines. So what I do uh, here, I want to show something first. Uh, uh, one bottom is like a, direction change, the total number of direction change from a particular line. Like I want to see like how is the railway station located somewhere, the main railway station, how well connected is it to the city. So I click on the street where it's located, it's somewhere at this line. I think it's here somewhere. Click on the line. And then if suddenly this button becomes active, which we call step that, I click on that one. And then you see that uh, the railway station is in blue, and then you see all the direction change. But I like to do the opposite, so I, you can invert coloring. So I prefer to do like, okay, the railway station in Rotterdam, you see that some areas has very poor yeah, accessibility to the railway station. But you can do several railway stations, because Rotterdam has some small railway station. You have one. Then you can hold the, the shift button, you have the railway station somewhere here, somewhere there, somewhere there, somewhere there, and ski down. And you click on this, and then it takes all the points at the same time. And then you see like some areas in the south, 
in the southwest are really has very poor rail access and also in the far east also. So that's one way of uh, playing with the, with the tool. So, so that is, uh, and then you, you can see that what you did when you, you call it a step step somewhere. Uh, step step is this folder. You see, you can click on that one. But you can also rename the folder. So you can click on, I think it's, if you click on, shift, I don't have the mouse, but you can go, it's a new folder. Yeah, attributes here. Yeah. Rename color. We call it step that railway station. Because when you make a new step that analysis, you get a new folder, and then this one will keep. So that's it. That's everything about actual analysis, because it's getting more and more outdated. So we go over to the angular part, and also with metrical radiuses. So what we do, first we have to convert the drawing map, is convert active map, this map plus convert active map, and then you have to go to segment map. So what the software does, if you have a long axial line, and it has several junctions, it brings the axial line up in junctions. And then you go to tools, and then you can go to segment, and then you can click Run Angular Segment Analysis and you can put, you can click on the radius type and when you have segment steps, I think it's more like topological direction change. You can have an angular weighting, you can have metric, so you can choose, but I start with the, you can put radius M, but that takes very long time so that you can do while you make dinner. Just show radius 3 and see how long this does take. Two, three minutes. So then it, we let it run because I want to show you that part. And uh, is it easy to follow so far? So everything is in uh, written very in in the in the depth map manual. So we, we keep on updating because while we are giving the workshops, uh, we always tend to discover the errors while you are testing them out, not while you not while you write. So. So what I will run is here from Rotterdam, but I have also a map of Delft, but I always use the Rotterdam map because of the, the, the arrows inside it. So, any questions? Did you all receive the maps? No, we just did. Yeah? No, no, we don't have the uh, email. Okay, uh, I can, okay. I can put that just give it to my uh, yes? Yeah, please ask, please ask someone near you to give you the maps if, uh, you if, you not, didn't if you're not a member in the list, yeah. just ask. Yeah. 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 The calculation? Yeah. You want to see the mathematical formulas? Yeah. Ah, the control. control. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Are you using the new version or the old one? I'm not sure. I think it's the zero to C. Zero to A. That's not X. Ah, so the new one, for the new one, there is a trick. Yeah. Uh, the default version of the new one is a simplified version, so all the measures that are not core into the space index, let's say, philosophy, yeah. are deactivated in the beginning, so you have to go into the options. Because always a lot of extra folders. That's, that's extra, that's the, that's the old version that has everything by default. The new one, in order to avoid students coming back with uh, 50, crazy 50 correlations of uh, useless data, you know, because you can correlate pretty much everything to everything, we have uh, a put uh, an option in the menu, so you have to go to the options and click uh, a tick box that, that, uh, tick box that says uh, that you are an expert user. So if you are an expert user, so you have to unclick that one, okay, and you click OK, 
uh, and then you have to recalculate and you'll see more measures. Uh, uh -huh. but, but I don't use my info, so I have to check it. But if I would like an email, so okay. because I don't use my info at all.
So, uh, like, like the same. You see here in the corner, we have some coordinates. Because some maps have a different scale, you know, it's scale free. Particularly as it's an old actual map, I draw original ones for, for Axe now. But if you use GIS, sometimes the coordinates will follow. But in other maps, you don't have. So here, 29 point something, a lot of digits here. And, uh, and what I tend to use is like for a high meter, I tend to, to use 29 or 30 or 20, just it takes less time. And then for the low metric radius, I take 10% and I use radius 2. So I will run the radius, put the 2 first into the map. We'll click OK. It goes much more faster. And then I will run the larger metric radius, which is 20. So, uh, so I can. Uh, uh, and then I will show you. I show you first what the short metric radius does. But after, while the long, the, the big uh, metric, the large metric radius, it takes about five minutes. I can go and help you around with your questions while it's running. Um, you probably will, and then I will show how to normalize the data. So this is the topological radius with two. If I will highlight the centers a little bit more, so I go to the color range. So I make the red a little bit more red, so you see what does it show. I do it like this. Then you see the, the higher values, you can, the contrast is, is bigger. So you see the various local centers, the local shopping streets appearing. And then I go to the tools. I'm going to the, do the same exercises again. Tools, segment, run topological or metrical analysis. And then I take a higher radius, and then I put 20. Click OK and it keeps busy for a while. Let's see what this one does it say. It doesn't, I hope it doesn't say too long time. 20, yeah, 20 minutes, yes. That's true. Too long. Uh, <laughs> so, put a bigger one and uh, the bigger the bigger the radius, the faster it is. The, the smaller, the smaller, sorry, the smaller yeah. radius. I showed the I show already the smaller radius. But I was thinking why it's you see how sometimes it takes faster than it uh, say so. So what I can do? Sometimes. It's a very... Uh, it has to be very, very light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not during a presentation. No. Not lack never yeah, yeah. comes during a presentation. But the, how are the installation, uh, how are they working? But you know what I can do? I can open already a process map. So that is what they do when they show cooking programs. I think uh, we were talking about normalizing. Yeah, I will show it now. Yeah. Okay. So I just click cancel. I close this one. I just close this one. And we open already a process map. I think you have a. Uh, we can go to Shenzhen. I think we have some across the nation. Here, you have a lot of folders here because I process a lot here. And uh, what I really like is I have three different metrical radiuses. I have two. In this case, the radius 10 is the smallest, then you have something in the middle, and then you have a very high metrical radius. But I always like to see, like, where if you look in. Uh, how, where are the vital centers, like this central business district area? You have a main route to go through here. So, everybody see these lines? This is with the high metric radius, and this is with the low metric radius. You see, like, the CBD areas, like, with very high-rise buildings and so on, and I think that the streets are uh, quite dead. And then you see, like, probably it must be a sort of what you call urban village around, around in these areas. So it's very interesting to see what's happening in the low and the high metric radius. 
it seems like. Well, you can always check out how is it. You can see the scatter plot. You go to the scatter plot, and then I want to see the topological choice with the low radius and the high. And you see, like, if the scatter plot, if the dots get an L shape, it means like those lines with the high metrical radius have a very low, very low <coughs> radius, and vice versa. That you tend to get in a lot of these post urban areas. But it's very interesting which street has higher value on both. What's happening there? So you can mark it in the scatter plot. I'm interested in these values which is there. Now they mark it, and there's a scatter plot off, off. And then you see, like this street, it's highlighted. So this street. It could be very interesting. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a very vital shopping street in this area. So that is, uh, I, I've never been in Shenzhen, so, uh, so that is uh, one way. What I can do, because now the streets are marked, I can do also a step that analysis from these segments with high values. So I click on this one, and then I invert the color range, and then you can see like uh, how accessible on this center is like that have both high and low metrical values. So that is one way you can start to play with the data. But also, you can normalize the data. So what you can do is to log them. So I think I already normalized it, but I can show you with this one. Now I want to normalize the data with the low metrical radius. So what you do, you click here, you make a new folder, add column, Rename, I call it more, uh, as a metric radius cap. Okay. And now you have a, a folder, and then you go to click on this one, update column, the one with the blue plus, and I want to log the name, because you can take log, bracket, and then what was it? Uh, and then you have to click on the side, topological choice radius 10 metric, use attribute, plus 2, and bracket. I think I need to add the extra bracket. Yes, long bracket, yes. Okay. There it is. It's normalized. It's also written in the number. What? It's to, to log the data. <laughs> You know so the log, the logarithm actually compresses the data, remarks the whole thing, and then a smaller number brings everything. And it helps a bit. It, uh, it helps a bit uh, with the display. Yeah. So it, it's a visualization. It's a more a, because, but also it's very useful for statistic correlation because we want to compare. We have the four cities where we have. The, uh, we want to compare with space and crime data, and. Uh, in some cities, we use a metric or radius like 200,000 units, and the other city it was 20, like Rotterdam. And then you want to compare it with one another, and then it's very good to use the normalized data when you want to compare cities with one another, like the statistic data. So that is a way of compressing, because what I tend to do when I uh, use, before I start to normalize the data, I, I tend to use the color range highlight uh, these various centers. So this, I, I find this, this useful when you want to do statistical comparison. So there's also a new choice measure that you're going to introduce. Yeah, the NHO is normalized. Yeah, that's a normalized yeah. choice. And that's a, oh yeah, the normalized is a different thing. That uh, technically, if you ask a mathematician, I think this is not a normalization. It's not exactly a mathematician's definition of normalization. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is again not a mathematician's definition of normalization, it's a new measure, Bill call it uh, normalized. Uh, but yeah, it's, it helps compare uh, um, graph, graphs, graphs with different uh, node counts, so different yeah, yeah. sizes. And empirically, it seems to work great. So if there is a line with a 1.4, which is 1.5, which is highly a strong line, let's say, in the system. Uh, it seems to correlate with a smaller uh, CT with the same 1.5 value. But it's, a, it's an empirical, let's say, new measure. 
Do we answer that in the same way, like we do here? Yeah, again, uh, the, the, the NA choice, the NA choice is a uh, uh, log choice uh, plus, uh, plus two divided by log uh, total depth plus three. Yeah, I guess I have. So it's, it's again, uh, it, it's both of them are logged, so they are kind of sort of compressed. Okay. And but they need to put in the manual, like in the latest work. If you look at the latest article from Billy here, okay. where we use the max values and so on, yeah, the, this we will need to put in the depth map on the road. Yeah. Because, but first I have to figure out how to do it. I don't yeah, it's still experimental. <laughs> That's wonderful because, I mean, if, um, by reading the, the uh, Bill Killer's article and then applying it, um, we, we always have to doubt why it is that it is plus. Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, no, no, the plus two, the plus two, there is a logic in the plus two. Uh, when you log values, the choice can be from zero to a very huge number. Because mm -hmm. uh, um, um, stops, you know, streets without any other end, yeah. dead ends, always have zero. Okay? Because there's no, no other uh, shortest path. I'll explain about shortest paths in the second half, but so there is zero. Uh, the log. Uh, that's why we put plus two, because you can add plus two to everything and you avoid the zero values. Mm -hmm. So you can have a better correlation. Yeah. Well, that, that's true. Um, but there's also lines with minus one, which are for small radius. Lines that don't have any values. And don't have any value, so they have minus one. So just this log of zero is an error. Log of minus one is an error. Therefore, the plus two is just a mathematical trick to. Shift it to, and it doesn't so that the minus one becomes one, yeah. and then the log works. Mm -hmm. uh, mathematically, it doesn't affect the, the yes, at all. At it's all. It's just a shift. So right. Okay. This yes. is a I have been left without holidays uh, this year. <laughs> <laughs> For goodness' sake, I will bring. Uh, I will discover the uh, the crunch of the whole thing. But some elegant crunch. <laughs> It, it, it is, uh, let's say it's empirical, it's not exactly, it cannot be explained in uh, 100%. There's no scientific reason for it other yes. than let's allowing say to do this type of calculation. It doesn't affect the, the end results. Uh, mathematically, the, adding the two to the log is not yeah. yet a problem. No, I accepted it and I discussed it with the real field myself. But uh, anyway, the thing is that uh, we had huge value. And uh, well, now we have got to, to redo the, the job anyway. Yeah. But first, yeah. let's just uh, go further because I was thinking of time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to show you the other analysis from. Uh, How much time do you have? Can we turn off those lights? Because the yeah, well, you can turn uh, all the lights off. Yeah, I think it's better. And then I hope you're not it's too jet lagged and fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear somebody snoring, I will start singing. I have a microphone. <laughs> I hold the microphone and put on some sort of lights down, lights off. Well, somebody has it there. Uh, yeah. So, great. Is it my or Let's hope you're not feeling sleepy. Yeah, it is not. When we hold the microphone, we will start snoring. We need it at the car of the car. We'll go with the microphone and the sound coming.
the urban blocks are close polygons. And then, most important, you need to have a ground following the street, a sort of around the whole thing at one close polygon. Because uh, to stop when you run, want to run an all line analysis, that's very simple. You click on this button and that says actual map. You don't need to convert anything, the map is already there. You click on that one. And you click in one of the perfect spaces, and then it runs all possible sidelines. So it's very useful for, uh, I use it for people who are doing uh, projects. Uh, my MSC student did a project around the railway stations. It's like how orientable is the vicinity from the railway station, or in the urban, small urban neighborhood with a square. So if you see here, you see, here you see a square, and then you see some lively parts, and you see some lesser lively parts, and you see it in analysis. But the archaeologists, they tend to use this one and make an actual map from there. So you can really, if you're running in a small area, uh, what they do, they go to tools, and they go to actual contact patch and reduce the viewer's line map, and then you get an actual map. And then from there you can run uh, all their, the analysis of what we did in the previous session. So, the same exercise. So that the archaeologists tend to use this part. Because the biggest city is more, more or less of this size. So, that is this one. That is the whole wide analysis. So, that you can save as a separate file. And then I just close this one. So the all wide analysis, in, in this complex analysis, there are three things you have to analyze. The one is the all wide analysis, that you save as a separate map. Then you have the isovist analysis, I will show you now. Click on this one, map, import, same map again, drawings of the app and the file. And this is like from one particular point you can run isovist. So I'm very interested to see, like, if I place a fountain on the square, you see this yellow sunny button, you call it, and you click on Isovis, I click on this one, and I want to choose what kind of degree I want to have, 360, click OK, and then you get the Isovis from that square. You can click on another one, like this, you can choose one, also 360 degree, you get one there. Or you want to see, like, what do I see if I have a view angle of 180 degrees? So you can click on, I want to see what happens if I'm standing on this road and looking, I want to have, like, 120 degrees, for example. And then it comes out like this. So this is, so this you can also say separately. So that was the second part. Now I want to show you the third part, and that is the funny part. Just close this one, start a new again, map, import, drawings of the AutoCAD, open, and this is the more funny part. Oh, that is what you call, you're running analysis from every point of all public spaces. So what we do is, first you go to tools, visibility, set grid. You can also click on that button here as a grid. And I click OK, and I find OK. This is a little bit too rough. So I can click also on this screen, and I say I want it a little bit more finer. And I click 2. OK. And then, of course, I zoom in so you can see it better. And then you need to have the field button here. It's very important because I want only to analyze the public spaces. So you click on the public spaces on the field button. And then you go to tools, and then you go to visibility, and then make visibility graph and click OK. And then it runs the whole thing, but the grid view, you don't want to turn it off. So you go to view, show grid, and then turn it off. And then you see what it does, it uses the same formula, it calculates how integrated it each, each, each cell to all other cells. So every time you go to another cell, you take a topological step. So this is probably the most visible point. And then 
from there you have several options, it's depending on you go to tools, visibility, and you have make ISOVs part, run a visibility graph analysis, step lab, several options used more for building. I always like to calculate the ISOVs the, uh, uh, properties. And then I go to ISOV compactness. I never like the color, I just invert the color range. And then you see like like what are the more visible. Here you see a very nice sort of ISO sideline coming here, but the grid is very, uh, I have a very rough grid. The more fine graded the grid, the longer time the analysis takes, but also the more accuracy you have. So here we have several options, it's used more in buildings. I, I do not use it so much, I only use this one. Um, then the next part is um, agent-based modeling, that's the funny part, the wow part. And you go to tools, agent tools, run agent, agent analysis, and then you have several options. So you can put 500, you can put another extra there and click OK. And then it shows the path of a lot of people, how they walk for a certain time, and which traces they will take if the equal is spread in the, in the, in the city. But what to do from one particular point, that's also interesting, but before I will show you some other possibilities, I will say that if I go, I go to the, the agent tools, run agent analysis, here is the view field, is the 50 degree, I will make it very short, I will call it Oslo Center on the Monday morning where everybody goes to the job, put the view to uh, 7, and that is steps before deciding the direction. Here we have three, let's take it to five and see what happens. And it takes... So you see like the lines are much more straight, everybody's going to the job. But what about Oslo Center, because the region drink a lot on a Saturday evening, so you can think like this. I go to tools, agent tools, run agent analysis, I put the angle view like 30. Or like tourist, tourist it can also be. They put the steps like two, for example, or one. It can also be very funny. So, so what you see that suddenly all the tourists gather us kind of, ah, what's going on here? You know, like this. <laughs> you feel like a, uh, or it could be like Oslo on the Saturn night, where everybody falls asleep drunk on the square. So that is, uh, when I go back again to the, what is automatically put on, it's like U is was 15 here, and it was 3 here. And that is the more, more or less normal. So, Can yes? Can you explain what that means, the field of... The view field is like, uh, you know when you have to, when you choose your way, oh, okay. So it's like the angle is narrow to so this instead of this. You're more directed. Yeah, more directed. Direct the other one is more like. Okay. The other one is steps before turn decision. That's like three, three, three cells. So that's what? Three cells. Three cells. Three cells. So, it's three, so the agent walks, checks the environment. How do you what it does? It checks the environment and checks the field of view. So the bigger the field of view, the more choices you've got. I see. Okay, so you choose one point that is, you check whether that point is good for you, kind of independent of whatever value you want, then you walk towards that direction for three steps, and then you reevaluate the whole situation. So you do three steps checking, three steps. Right. Yeah. So when the steps, the steps before turn is smaller, that means you're more static, or you are meandering, or just... Uh, I think if it's smaller, you can go, yeah, you yeah, more and more weird. I see, okay. okay. want to check from one point. You go to window, I guess this is what I used to convince, you know, the particular people who, if you want to, people who want to see wow factor on specifics. So I always tend to go to this one, go to window, and go to 3D view, then you get my three-dimensional view, you can zoom in and zoom out. Yeah, it's more or less, uh, see, but what you do, you have some agents, you can put 
add agent, and then you want to trace where it's working, and then I say, let's say there's a tube station here, and you can start adding a lot of agent. Let's see if I can zoom in. And then, you see now it's a train arriving, so I put a lot of them. And then they walk for a while, and then you can see like how do they orientate after three minutes or after ten minutes? Just add some more, is it just another metro or a train coming? And then you can just let them walk. So when you run the analysis, you're actually deploying uh, you know, 5,000 of them in random locations. Yeah, yeah. but this is from one location. I like to see. Yeah, yeah, this is one location. Yeah. So the thing is, like, I think you can, um, from this, I forgot to tell you, if you want to export the screen, this, only this, you can go to, I think it's back, and then you know, click export screen or copy screen, and then exactly what your screen is, you can copy or paste it into your PowerPoint, or, and when you export, you get an EPS file of the analysis. But in this case, you cannot uh, export it. So I use screen uh, shop for like, how do they behave after three minutes, how do they behave after ten minutes, to show how orientable is, for example, a railway station in comparison with its vicinity. So this is uh, this you can start to play with, and uh, I'm almost finished. But I want to show you just how do we export your all your data. I'm just going to turn this off. What you do, you turn up on the window, click on 3D, and then you're back here. So first, let's say I want just I'm interested in that square, for example. Then you can go to Edit, Export Screen, and then you get the EPS file. And then you type in the name of it and say it's on there. Or go to Edit, Copy Screen. But also when you run, um, when you're using GIS, everything what you've been running, you can go also to map and export. And then you can make from here, you can make a map. Or the CSV if you want to do any statistical population. Yeah, all this, uh, these kind of things you can export as you want. I think I've explained everything. Get all the buttons and everything. Yes. And all the add data column, normalize. Yes. Yes. When no. we add when we add agents in the three D, what is the perimeter parameters of those agents? The default value that we answer if you're not. Yeah, the previous one. The, yeah, the, 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 just you add the angle. Whatever, whatever that's okay. Yeah. So that's because you have the It's more for demonstration rather than really yeah. fine uh, because you have to wait a lot of time yeah. for the, yeah. the whole thing. Yes. So so just to show it's what probabilistic, you have to wait for all the well, other probably, yeah. to, 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 to set it in order to find the meaningful uh, number. Yeah. You can start uh, spread the number. Yeah. Yeah. I think this, I'm finished with the, the, the part, but have you been managed? Just a question to follow and do it on your maps while I was showing. <coughs> yes? Thank you, Lord. It's just for you. The angular analysis is if uh, every junction, when your segment comes to a junction, if it's a straight line, it gets a value like, uh, it puts value on the angle. So you get a value that the line is more or less continuous. But the more you deviate from it, from every segment, the, the higher, sort of, you add a value to it. So you add the angular relationship in it. And what you see is like a city consists of a very, low number of long uh, streets and always connected to another long street which is uh, close to 180 degree angle like more or less very, like continuous like this and then you have a very high number of short streets and they're always ending very close to 90 degrees so obviously they tend to be local twenty streets so that, uh, that is, uh, and it comes so you, through this analysis, you see like how it, the main route of the network is highlighted, in, uh, like in how, and also how it's connected to local centers. That is very useful. Uh, any more questions? And just a question: Did you manage to play with the data while I was running?
I hope the deaf manual will help you because I will add some new things about the latest stuff of Bill. And then there's a deaf map manual on the GitHub. But I hope also to add one of the for the Mac version very soon. So uh, for dummies, so we can get both versions. Mm -hmm. oh. That map manual for Alzheimer's. So it's definitely it's, it's a, sort of the same, so sort of everyone can follow. Yes. The, the icons might look a bit different, but it's in the same order. Yes. I will just check it because I always have to write, because I always forget to tick something. But uh, I just write everything. <laughs> uh, any more questions? Then uh, Tassos will take over with the real advanced stuff. Yes? Yeah? Um, it is actually useful. What? Is it it's useful? Really useful? Especially with beginners. Yeah, yes, that's why. Uh, you see, I'm an outsider. You know, <laughs> would, would be so if you have a group in London, and then you have in every university a one or two lonely walls. And I like to do research. After 10 years here now, I've been explaining space syntax for stubborn, complete human, but dealing with people with Dutch stubbornness. So you have to explain it with the right teaspoons. <laughs> so I've been, I've been doing it quite fast in comparison to what I'm used to doing. Okay, so lots.